Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video on the channel today. So today we're going to be talking about Warzone settings and how we can get the most efficient frame times and we can get the smoothest experience possible. Now, before we deep dive into this video, I just want to say a quick thank you to anybody who viewed, liked, commented, all the good stuff on the previous video about no lag VPN. That's been one of the highest performing videos on the channel so far. So hopefully I can continue that same style of videos and you guys will still keep enjoying it. And lastly, before we get into the settings, I do want to say that I stream on Twitch every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Link is going to be in the description if you do want to check it out. It'd be nice to talk to some of you guys in real time and hopefully we can kick a few games of dance together maybe. So come check it out and uh, yeah, join the community. So obviously, today we're talking about warzone settings so if you guys didn't know this game is absolutely plagued with memory leaks direct deck errors i don't know if sometimes you alt tab back into it the game freezes stutters screen tears all kinds of things wrong with this game not to mention that if you want to play anything above 60 frames you're going to need to dump at least eight nine hundred pounds into a pc so it's obviously a very very demanding game so i do want to say just for my sake that this is not going to be the albeit savior this is not going to get you 100 plus frames like the big streamers a two PC setup is obviously what you're going to need for the most efficient gameplay. Me personally, I play on one PC and stream on the same PC. So it's all going through the biggest workload of its life. But these settings have helped me get more efficient and smoother frame rates. So a quick rundown on how things are going to go in this video. What we're going to do first is we're going to open up Warzone. I'm going to show you all the settings that you really want to change inside of Warzone for the most efficient gameplay. But you're also not going to be losing that visual quality just so you can keep seeing them rows in the pesky corners. Then after that, I'm going to show you guys two programs that you can use to get more efficient frame times and then we're going to go to the config file change a few settings in there and that's going to be it just a quick little heads up also that i am learning about this stuff too so if i go into a deep dive explanation and start talking about things that it may be slightly incorrect please don't start going at me in the comments do educate me in the comments i'd like to know if i was wrong if there's something i could do better be nice to know some feedback from you guys all right so the first step before we get into any settings or start changing anything around inside of warzone or any config files we're going to make sure that our drivers for our graphics cards are up to date any amd users i'm sorry i use an nvidia card personally so if you're an nvidia user here's how you check that you're on the latest driver so what you want to do first is head to your taskbar and search for nvidia geforce experience everyone should really have this installed if you're an nvidia person if you haven't got it installed I recommend do so there will be a link in the description below now once geforce experience is opened you want to head to drivers so i currently i'm on a release of 5 11 21 they have released a more recent driver i will update that soon but i'm not going to do it just yet if you haven't already updated it i would recommend doing so now that you have the latest graphics card drivers installed for your card let's head into warzone and start changing some settings so now that we have warzone open let's head into our options head into the graphics tab and let's start messing with some settings first up we got display mode i run full screen personally because i want to get the max refresh rate at my monitor and i've had no instability issues some people have reported that full screen board looks worse better for them me personally i have two monitors that run at different refresh rates my main monitor is 144 hertz my second monitor is 60 hertz so this is what's best for me screen refresh rate you're going to make sure that's the highest possible me personally i run 144 i have dropped a tiktok in the description below if you do want to check it out how you can run the max refresh rate for your monitor render resolution you're going to make sure that this is set to 100 each and every time you start up this game this game is notorious to not saving settings every time you close it so try and make it a habit that every time you close the game to jump into your settings just give your settings a once over that you're running full screen with 100 percent render res sync every frame or essentially v-sync you're going to want that disabled custom frame rate now we're going to set this to unlimited i'm going to show you guys a program at the end of the video which we're going to use to limit the frames it's been known that the limiter inside of warzone increases frame times not so efficient and it's not so great nvidia highlights you're going to want this disabled and nvidia reflex low latency you're going to want this on enabled if you have a really really monster pc if you're running like a 3090 and like an amd 5000 series or a 7000 series you guys can go to enable plus boost be warned that when you set this to enable plus boost it can be a big power hog so your computer might be drawing a lot more power graphics and cpu might get a little hot than normal but yeah it should be fine now onto the details and textures tab so starting off with streaming quality for example, when you scope in on a sniper scope, someone to 200, 300 meters away, the world can be a little blurry. That is the game rendering low resolution textures just to save you guys on some frame rate. Me personally, I run a low because I don't really engage in that long range of a fight. Can help some people. Some people do like running it on normal. I personally run it on low, but feel free to experiment and see what you guys prefer more. Next is the texture resolution. Now this is going to be how many pixels are allowed to be given on a certain object. For example, your weapon or an object on the shelf in Superstore. So higher resolution means cleaner pictures. Me personally, I don't really care how things look. I've been raised on Counter-Strike for years and years of my life. So I just run normal. Now, texture filter anisotropic. I know it's a little confusing to say, 
but this is a method that's used to clean up textures when viewed at an off angle. If you're not really looking for the Hollywood visuals, I'd recommend setting this to low or normal. Me personally, I run normal just so the paths can look a bit decent, but yeah, low is also acceptable too. Now we've got particle quality. This kind of speaks for itself. This is the quality of the particles off explosions and dust in dark and hard to see areas. Now you're probably expecting me to say to set this on low, but some people have said that when you set it to high, it can kind of clear up the visuals a little. So I'd recommend setting it on high. Bullet impacts and sprays disabled, tessellation disabled, on-demand texture streaming, all disabled. Now we have shadow map resolution, similar to texture resolution. This is gonna be for shadows just in particular. Normal's a great setting for this, not too much of an FPS increase or decrease depending on what setting you use. I use normal just to kind of clean up the visuals a little. Now we've got cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows, both disabled. Particle lighting, you want to set this onto low. Direct X ray tracing, now you'd be surprised. I've seen a few people actually run this on stream. You don't want to run this at all. Very, very big FPS downer. You don't want this running at all. Make sure this is disabled. Ambient occlusion and screen space reflection, both disabled. Filmic strength set to zero. Nvidia DLSS disabled. Anti-aliasing, now you can set this to one times or two times. The higher you set it, it's gonna be a bit more demanding, but it just kind of cleans up those jagged edges you see on the images to the right. Now this is gonna be for you console people as well. Depth of field, world motion blur, and weapon motion blur. You wanna set all three of those to disabled. Okay, now this last setting could take a little tinkering, so stick with me for a bit. So dynamic resolution, you're gonna to want to set this to enabled. Now for a consistent frame rate in Warzone, I'm aiming for 120 frames. You can see that I set my dynamic render resolution to 110. What this is gonna do, it's gonna compensate me in those very demanding FPS areas, or if there's a lot of explosions, any vehicles, anything like that, it's gonna drop the render resolution. I'm not gonna notice it, and it's not actually gonna be that big of an impact to the game, but it's gonna help my frame stay way more efficient and hit that target of 120 that I need. Now, where it's gonna take some experimenting decides on what your frame rate that you're trying to hit is. If you're running a medium to high-end PC, I'd recommend between 110 frames and 140. If you're running a medium to low-end PC, I'd recommend anywhere between 60 frames to about 90 frames now remember we're not looking for the highest frames here we're just aiming for consistency so with all the settings in warzone done let's jump back to the desktop i'm going to show you guys two applications that you can use to get more efficient frame rates now our first program that we're going to use is reva tuna statistics server or to put it simple, RTSS. I have put a link in the description where you can download this program. And once you have Revertuner open, you're gonna to want to go to the bottom left where it says add. And from here, you wanna to navigate to where you can find the Modern Warfare executable. For most of you guys, it's gonna be in your program files and it's gonna be in the Blizzard folder and it's gonna be in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Once you find the executable, you wanna hit open. And once you have that added, you're gonna have it in your list. You wanna click on that. Now, we're not really bothered about all these settings down here. The one we want here is frame rate limit. Now, remember when I said that I'm aiming for 120 frames? This is where you're gonna set your number that you want the game to frame rate cap at. This has been found to be way more efficient than the limiter inside of Warzone, and it does help keep render times down low also. So once you find the number that you want, you're gonna to want to type it inside there. So I put 120, and then we're done with Reaver Tuner. So you can just minimize that. And when you launch Warzone, it will automatically be limited by Reaver Tuner. Now the next program we're gonna use is Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, or to put it short, ISLC. Now what ISLC does is it cleans up all the standby items in your RAM. So any background Windows applications, anything like that running in the background, it puts them all on hold and it frees up a lot of space in your RAM. This is very, very useful for anybody who suffers from stuttering or micro stuttering inside of Warzone. And once you have ISLC open, what you're gonna do is size at least, you're gonna put this to 1024, that's essentially a gig. Now where it says free memory is lower than, this is gonna vary depending on how much RAM you have inside of your system. Users with eight gigabyte of RAM, you wanna put this to 4096. Users with 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're gonna put this to 8196. And users with 32 gigabytes of RAM, you're gonna set this to 16,000. Set your wanted timer resolution to 0 0.50, enable custom timer resolution, hit start, purge your standby list, and your polling rate should be 500, and you can go ahead and minimize that. All right, I hope you guys are still with me. I know it's been a very, very long video. I'm just here to remind you that if this has helped you so far, please do drop a like on the video, drop a comment in the description below. I have got one more thing to show you, so stick with me. Let's jump into it. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is gonna change something in the Modern Warfare config file. So what you want to do, navigate to your documents, head to the Modern Warfare folder, players advanced underscore options you want to right click this open with a notepad now as you can see at the top it says generated by infinity wards this is automatically generated if you delete this don't worry your the game's not going to crash automatically generated once you start up warzone what this does it just scans your system and analyzes what its best render work account and video memory scale is now render a work account you're going to set this to half of the cores that you have in your cpu if you don't know how many cores then follow me what you want to do right click your taskbar task manager head to the performance tab click on your cpu you can see I run an i9-9900K 
and I've got eight cores. So we head back to the config file. We're gonna change render worker count to four. And lastly, video memory scale, we're gonna set this to 0.6. Once you're done in here, hit file, save, file, exit. And you finally made it guys, you made it to the end. I hope that you guys have got more efficient frames. If not, you've got less stuttering. I hope I've helped anybody in a bad situation. This game is very demanding and honestly, it's so, so hard to run it smoothly and for a great experience. Now, just before I finish off the video, I am going to remind you again that I do stream on Twitch every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Link is going to be in the description. If you do want to come by, say what's up to the stream, I would appreciate it. And if this video has helped you out, I'd appreciate if you drop a like, drop a comment down below, hit that sub button and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Take care. Peace.